Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, uh, depending on which uh, part of the world you are uh, listening to us. My name is uh, Dr. Engineer Inoki Murenga. I uh, will be presenting this first lecture in the series of many solar power engineering that will benefit a lot of you with the knowledge and also some of the uh, practical aspects. Today, I present to you an overview of solar power systems, an overview of solar power systems. Uh, the idea is that you get to understand uh, the genesis of the introduction when it comes to solar power engineering. So we look at solar radiation and energy, solar radiation and energy. Then we we'll look at the two types of uh, solar power systems, which is the solar thermal system uh, with a focus on concentrated solar power, CSP. And then in the second part, uh, we we'll look at uh, solar uh, photovoltaics power, which is solar PV uh, power. And here we have uh, a capture of the sun uh, with the source of uh, NASA, which is basically a red ball, a mass of red ball, uh, which gives us radiation that reaches the Earth atmosphere and surfaces. So we start with the solar radiation and energy. So basically the sun is the source of energy that reaches the Earth's atmosphere. The sun, uh, which is what we have looked at uh, here, is the source of the energy that we normally receive uh, on Earth. So energy is basically in the form of radiation and is responsible for the changes in temperatures on the Earth surfaces and also places. So the temperature that we are receiving today uh, in Hong Kong, uh, in China, in Russia, in Sweden, in USA is basically uh, as a result of the energy in the form of radiation that is coming from the sun. So this radiation from the sun can either be absorbed, reflected, or diffused by particles at any location on Earth. This radiation from the sun uh, can be diffused, reflected, or absorbed by particles uh, at any location on Earth. So this gives rise to a property of an object, particle, or material, which we call the albedo. The albedo is one important aspect when it comes to solar radiation and energy. This albedo is basically the ratio of the radiation returning from a given surface compared to the amount that initially strikes the surface. So when we receive radiation from the sun, how much of it returns when it hits an object is a property of the albedo. Uh, one important aspect uh, of uh, uh, temperatures with the uh, very low temperatures and also with snow uh, is that uh, the albedo is very high when it comes to snow, which also explains and accounts for uh, higher radiation when it's spring in most of the countries which receives a snow. So the energy that we get uh, from the sun can actually have a relationship uh, together with the temperature. This was actually uh, expressed by Stefan, which is called the Stefan uh, Bosman's law, where the rate of radiation is equals to the Bosman's constant times the temperature in Kelvin to the power four. And the Boltzmann's constant that is normally applicable with the, the Stefan Boltzmann's law is 
uh, 5.67 times 10 to the power negative 8. So at the temperature of uh, 57 skis the Kelvin, the total solar output is 3.84 times 10 to the power 26. And then when we move further and we standardize the parameters, we have got what is called the solar constant. Uh, the solar constant are expressed in what per square meter is basically the energy that is received at uh, the top of the atmosphere on a surface that is perpendicular to a beam for the mean solar distance. Uh, so this is the, the solar constant, and this is the uh, popular uh, uh, radiation, solar radiation or irradiation that strikes most of the surfaces uh, on Earth. Uh, we come to the first part, uh, the first part, which is solar thermal uh, system, solar thermal system. As or solar heat system uh, with the, a pictorial view of a concentrated solar power system. A concentrated solar power system is composed of some of the standard components that have been shown here. Uh, we have got the sun, which uh, gives us the solar radiation or irradiation. And then we have got parabolic reflectors which concentrates uh, the sun's rays hitting this surface to a heat receiver. So a heat receiver basically is connected to the energy storage uh, with the heat transfer being done using a warm fluid. Uh, if we look uh, further on, we have got the heat exchanger and also the fluid storage. So once uh, heat is received, uh, it's got to energy storage and then which passes through the heat exchanger. Once it passes through the heat exchanger, then it goes to the fluid storage with uh, a temperature difference to the one that uh, goes to the energy storage. With the entire arrangement is the, a turbine alternator system uh, which runs on uh, the heat uh, that is concentrated uh, from the rays of the sun. So a concentrated solar power system uh, is similar to conventional power systems that are there, except now we use the sun to actually uh, produce heat and the heat is what drives the, the turbines. So this, is, this can be a, a replacement of some of the common thermal uh, systems that uh, uh, utilize coal or steam. So, but then it's, it's, its deployment is far different to that of the next technology, which is very important and has gained uh, popularity globally. So having talked about the solar thermal systems, we go to the solar PV uh, systems, solar power systems. So in a nutshell, this is a simple arrangement of a solar PV system. We have the sun similar to the CSP uh, in the other slide, which gives us uh, irradiation. So this irradiation uh, uh, strikes the PV array, which converts uh, the incoming solar radiation into DC. So the DC power that is converted by a PV array has got to be stabilized by using a DC uh, to DC converter. And then after having been stabilized, then if we need to use DC power, then we can actually supply our loads uh, via our DC to DC converter. But if we need AC output, then we have got to convert our DC power to AC power by using uh, an inverter, by using an inverter. 
when we look at uh, this architecture, we see that the DC to DC converter, which does the stabilization of the power that comes in, is basically what conventionally now we refer to as the charge controller. Our charge controller will actually receive unstable uh, power, unstable voltage, and stable current, which is changing all the time. Uh, later on in the other uh, lectures that we will look at, we will look at uh, the production cycle, the production cycle where we see that actually the voltage and the current that is being received from uh, a PV panel or PV array uh, basically is not all that stable, it changes. But then when we have a system, we need a DC source that is constant, either a, vote, or a constant voltage CV or constant current CC. And then when we move on further, traditionally when systems uh, were started, uh, we can actually see uh, a pictorial view of all the components that basically makes up uh, the architecture of the solar PV power systems. Uh, in this uh, slide, we can see that we have got the panel here, a solar panel. Then we produce uh, DC power, positive and negative. And then we need to have protection for the panel. So we can either have a DC MCB or a fuse. This is normally uh, accomplished using a DC combiner if you have got a lot of panel. But here we just show a one solar panel for clarity. Then we have a charge controller. A charge controller ensures that what is being received by the battery is actually constant voltage and to uh, in terms of current also constant current. So it's CVCC a kind of arrangement. And then later on, we will come to realize and understand that with charge controllers, we basically have got either PWM or MPPT. And then with a solar system, we have got a DC power and also AC power. So if most of the loads that you have are DC loads, you can actually feed them uh, direct uh, using the, the load output of a charge controller. So um, with the, having the system charging the battery, then to get AC to, support, to supply our loads, which can be um, fans, TVs, uh, pumps, and all these, which are AC in nature, we actually need an inverter. So this is an architecture that uh, our subsequent lectures will focus on. Uh, of course, now we also have uh, systems that are hybrid. That is, you have got the charge controller embedded in an inverter. These are some of the systems that are there now, but in the genesis, in the beginning, this is the architecture that was there. And most of the systems that were built long, long uh, time ago had this architecture. And that's why uh, you had automatic charge controller to basically sense if you have got a system that uses utility and also has got a solar system with it, you would have an automatic charge controller to sense when utility is not there or you can actually choose which of your supply should uh, feed uh, your load. Uh, for the part of the introduction uh, that has been done now, this is where we uh, end uh, this lecture. Thank you very much. And to enjoy more of the coming uh, lectures, uh, uh, the coming uh, knowledge on solar power, please subscribe, like, and share. And also invite your friends. This is a knowledge that uh, you can't miss. 
in case you have got questions or concerns or you would want to ask something you can actually send your questions your concern to my email which is you know one at gmail.com and i'll be able to respond to you thank you very much for for uh, being part of this first introductory uh, lecture and i hope to see you in the coming uh, uh, lectures and also to interact with you and share more knowledge in solar power. Thank you.